Hello everyone and welcome to The Celtic Coach. I'm your host, of course, The Celtic Coach. Happy St. Patrick's Day. By the way, it's March 17th today. So happy St. Patrick's Day uh, to the planet out there. All right, uh, I was doing the show today on the radio and uh, I thought, now wouldn't it be nice if I brought some elements of the radio show into my talk today? So we're going to talk today a little bit about finances, about money, about abundance. Now, people often say that, you know, money is the root of all evil. And usually I I like to think of it as it's not so much money is the root of all evil, but uh, having no money is could be the root of all evil. You know what I mean? Have you you ever been that part in your life where you just you have no money? I, uh, I I've been there many times in my life. I remember I remember one time in my life uh, back in my early 20s and uh, I was upstairs and I heard this banging going on downstairs in my house and I uh, came to the came to the to the landing there and I shouted down who's down there and uh, lo and behold there was a robber in my living room and uh, the robber said to me uh, I'm down here I'm robbing your house I said what are you doing he said I'm looking for money and so I said to him well listen hang on wait a minute I'll come down and help you look Now, if we find any, uh, we'll split it. How does that sound? He was pretty happy about the deal. We didn't find any money, though. That's how broke I was. Uh, I I remember one time I threw a penny into a wishing well, and the penny came back, and this little voice said, You need it more than I do. (laughs) So I knew there was something wrong in my life when I was thinking that, or when I was talking about uh, having money, and there was no money on the table. So today I want to talk a little bit about money. Now when people talk about money, uh, there's a lot of fear that comes up around money for people. And uh, the way I like to look at it is the the mission that I'm on, uh, the the intention for all of these shows uh, and the material and the information that that I put out in the world is all about keeping life simple and making life better. I live my whole life by that. Uh, and I found it to be a wonderful way to live. Now, I take everything in my life and I look at it, okay, how can I make that just a little bit better? So I, de- I don't need to go off and be a scientist, but I just want to make it a little bit better. And how can I take things in my life that are challenging or difficult? Right? We know that life is not complicated. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely not complicated. It's not easy, but it's not complicated either. We, t- we tend to make things complicated. So in terms of money, there's, a, there's, there's two ways of thinking about money. The first is the practical side. The very easy practical side of money. Now what you're going to hear today is you might think, oh Dermot, you know, that, that, sounds, uh, that sounds way too easy. And you know what, part of what I do and the information that I put out into the world is very simple, very practical information. Uh, you know, 90 billion dollars right now in the US is credit card debt. So let's take the practical side of this and then we look at the spiritual side because both is necessary. We live in a we're humans, we're a physical being living in a in a physical world, but you could also think of it in terms of we're spiritual beings living in a in a in a physical world. And so the physical and the spiritual is part of the deal. You can't have one without the other. And I think this is where it's nice that we bridge the gap. You have a lot of people that say, oh, you know, you got to work hard, you got to make money, you got to get out there every day, just make, do, 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 do. And there's nothing wrong with working hard. I like working hard. I'm a total fan of working hard. However, when your attachment to the result is driving the work, in other words, you're working so hard that you say to yourself, well, I'm only going to work hard until I get that result. The spiritual side of it comes in and says begin with the end in mind. Now what does that mean? All the great philosophers uh, uh, out there will tell you and a lot of the high achievers will tell you, Steve Jobs included, that the best way to work a project or creating more finances in this case is to start with the end in mind. So hey I want to make a hundred thousand dollars you know in the next year or whatever it might be I want to make twenty thousand dollars by the end of the year or I want my job to be giving me 
you know, five to eight thousand dollars per month every month, whatever it might be. And if you can focus more on the outcome as opposed to the activity, see, most of us when we're working, we focus on the activity. And I have to, I have to work, work, work in order to make a certain amount of money. But if you can do those, do those action steps, but be focused on the outcome, then you're using the practical and you're using the physical. So let's take the practical first uh, in, in terms of what we're talking today. Okay, so think about it like this, everyone. The reason we have so much credit card debt in the world, at least in America, 90 billion worth, is because people are living outside of their means. Now, you might think, oh, Dermot, that sounds like very, you know, basic stuff. But the truth is that the reason we have so much debt in America uh, and I'm sure in the world too, in Ireland as well. I mean, I live in, 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 in America now, uh, in Northern California, um, but the, uh, the numbers are there also. Not as high as America, but the numbers are there, and in all of Europe. So when we look at credit card debt, one of the ways that we can really, you know, go around that. Now, if you have credit card debt, I'm going to share a book with you at the end of our talk two books, one practical financial book and one very practical spiritual book, and I'll share those with you at the end of our talk today. Um, when we look at just living within our means or living within our purse, you know, as they say, you know, don't be worried about what the Joneses are doing, but just live within your means, spend what you have. It's a very simple concept, isn't it? Spend what you have when you think about it. Uh, but a lot of people don't do it. You know, you, you know the old adage of, well, it's common sense, but uh, uh, there's not too much uh, uh, it's common sense that's common right now. Live within your means. It's a very simple concept, and it's very easy to do if you decide, hey, most of what I, what I spend now, on, we'll just say the little things for starters, I'm going to use cash. So start using a little bit of cash. Start buying a... You know, the reason we use credit cards and not cash is because we're not connected to it. We're not emotionally invested in the credit card. We take out the credit card and we pay for a, a coffee for a mocha schmoka or we, we pay for a juice or for a $10 smoothie or whatever it is. We're not connected to the money. But when you have, when you take out $10 or $20 out of your pocket and you're paying for that mocha schmoka and that muffin, there's a different relationship your limbic system, your emotional brain gets involved and you start to feel, you start to have a connection to the money. It's the same way, think about it this way, if you go in to buy a car and you want to spend $10,000 on, on a used car and you say, hey, can, can we get some credit here? And the guy says, absolutely. By the way, the guy won't give you any type of a, of a discount with credit. But let's say that you walk in there and you took out $8,000 out of your pocket for a $10,000 car. And you took out $8,000 out of your pocket. Now, and you asked for a discount. You said, hey, I've got $8,000. I don't have $10,000 for this car. I've got $8,000 in cash that I'm willing to give you in this moment for this particular car. Can we do a deal? Do you think that car salesman is gonna to say to you that uh, no? He's absolutely going to say, yes, of course he will. Now, here's the thing. The second thing uh, in this is that your emotional brain, when it sees that money, when it sees that cash, it has an investment. It has a feeling to it. And now you're connected to that money in a whole different way. Your visual brain is connected, your neocortex, and your limbic system, your emotional brain is connected. Now, do you want to go out and start buying a car with cash? No, you don't have to do that. Let's keep it very simple here. Let's make it practical. Start with the little things. Take out $20 out of your, um, out of your savings account and put it in your wallet. Most people don't carry around cash anymore. Another way to save yourself money is to uh, go to the gas station and pay with cash. Have you noticed that at the gas station you get a much better deal? Now, if you use your credit card or whatever, you're going to get charged a fee. But use cash, you don't get charged anything. So use cash. 
it's a really wonderful way to live uh, and you have an emotional investment to the money which is which is a whole different ball game okay here's another thing with cash let's say you want to start a budget at your home you want to start a budget with how you're using cash one of the best ways that I know how to do this it's a wonderful wonderful way let's say you spend five hundred or six hundred dollars a month on your food now let's say you don't have a budget for anything in your life one of the things that you can do is go to the bank take out that five hundred dollars in cash Put it in an envelope and put on that envelope food. And when, and this is at the start of the month, now you have an emotional investment to that money. Now you're thinking when you go to buy food, you're not going to just buy anything and everything. Oh, let's have four boxes of chocolate and two boxes of cookies. And oh, hey, these chips are on sale. Let me get a bunch of those. You're going to have an emotional investment to that money. Knowing that when that $800 is gone from that uh, envelope, that that's all the money that's there for the month. This will change your relationship to spending. And this is, this is what we're talking about today. Changing your relationship to spending. Because we have no relationship with that credit card. There's no connection there. It's just a piece of plastic that we, you know, we give out and it's done. But when we take money out of our pocket... When you spend, if you go shopping twice a month, and you take out three, four hundred dollars, and you give it over there to the clerk, which they'll probably look at you, and go, uh oh, what's what, what's he selling? What what's what does he do for a living? <laughs> because we don't use money anymore, so that's a really nice way just to create a little budget. And when that eight hundred dollars is gone, it's gone, and that's it. Now it's not it's. It's not something that uh, uh, is easy to do. You know, going to the bank the first month is great, then the second month you kind of, I've had these experiences, you know. But once you get into a bit of a habit of it, uh, you know, put it on the calendar. Hey, on this particular day of the month, this is when I go to the bank and take out $800 for our food. Now, if you don't know how much you spend, then sit down and start to look at some of the prices of your stuff. Start to think, okay, so what are we spending on food per month? You usually have a good idea. If not, you can go to your, uh, your credit card statements or if you use a debit card, you can, uh, you can uh, look at those statements on your bank. By the way, a myth. Here's a myth about credit cards. I hear it all the time. I'm a professional life coach. I also train corporations to bring coaching into their organizations. And one of the things uh, that I will talk about in there too is money. And the myth is that, Dermot, I need a credit card. When I go travel, I need a credit card to buy um, uh, airline tickets. I need a credit card to buy a uh, rent a car and so on. The truth is that you can, you can um, rent a car with a, credit, with a debit card. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, buy an airline ticket with a debit card. And the nice thing is that the debit card, you're not spending money that you don't have, which is how you rack up credit card debt. You're spending money that you do have. And the debit card, at least, is a much better way than the credit card uh, to start to spend. And it goes what comes right out of your right out of your out of your uh, your account. So if you can't use credit cards, which I don't use, use a debit card. It works the same. It works the absolute same. All right, let's talk a little bit about the spiritual side. So that's some practical things, just very simple things. You know, life is simple. <laughs> Not always easy, but it's simple. You know, my, my, my mother said, Dermot, life is simple. We make it complicated, but it is simple. Now, is it easy? No, not always easy, but it's definitely simple. All right. I did a, I did a peace walk across America in 2009. I walked from L.A. all the way to Washington, D.C., dressed as Mahatma Gandhi. And one of the things, about halfway through, we ran out of money. And I think part of the reason was because I was so stressed about money that I'd constantly be saying to myself, we don't have enough money. Anytime that a friend would call and say, hey, how's the walk going? I said, it's going well. I said, but we don't have any money. I don't have any money. 
And I would say this, I would hear myself saying it. Well, for the first couple of months, I didn't hear myself saying it. But then I started to recognize that I was saying it to myself, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. Well, what you reap, you sow. What you, expand, what you uh, uh, put your focus on, you'll get more of it. Right? As the law of attraction says, you know, that which is likened onto it attracts. And what you think about all day, you'll become. So one of the things in terms of uh, uh, practical spirituality for finances is, is start to be aware of your words. Now this walk that I was talking about, I ended up in, in the middle of Texas. And uh, we were broke and it was a hot day and I had blisters on my feet. And I was totally done. I mean, I was just, I was haggard, you know. I was an Irishman that was done. Like, like toast, take me out, I'm done on both sides, you know, that kind of a way. And uh, I was, remember sitting at this, uh, at this church and I fell asleep because I was so tired. And when I woke up, I turned around, I was, get, I was starting to walk again, turned around and I saw this little uh, picture, this little, little uh, uh, statement on the door, little quote. And it said, when nothing is sure, everything is possible. And this thing hit me like a ton of bricks. It was amazing. When nothing is sure, everything is possible. And what I realized was that I had been pushing and forcing and telling myself with a lot of feeling, with a lot of, you know, when we have the head and the heart, when they're in alignment, like they call it entrainment or they call it alignment, coherence, uh, we can create anything we want. But it also can create negativity. When you're thinking and feeling, hey, I don't have any money, I don't have any money, this will create the experience of not having even more money than you don't have now. <laughs> and that's no fun for anyone. Trust me on that one. So one of the things that you can start to do is, here's a little technique now. This is a little kind of a spiritual but practical technique. When you go to bed at night, the last 30 minutes before you sleep, and the first 30 minutes in the morning. It's called the somnambulistic state. The Irish, the, the Irish word for that is uh, the subconscious, opening up the subconscious, you know. Uh, start to talk about money. Now start to talk about it and picture it in your head. Now, uh, I used to talk to my money all the time. Years ago, my money would talk to me as well. And the only thing that it said for years and years and years was goodbye. <laughs> you ever had that experience where your where your where your your money it comes in it comes in like a snail and it goes out like a rabbit. You ever ever, ever had that? You work hard for your money, it comes in slowly, but it seems to leave you like a you know, it comes in like a bad habit. Or no, maybe I should say <laughs> it come it comes in it comes in on a bad habit. Anyway, I'm going to throw that away because that wasn't going anywhere. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke about that, but there's just nothing there. All right, so here's, here's, the, here's the technique. Let's get back to being serious now. Serious. Um, in the evening, put your hand on your heart. Scientifically proven that when you put your right hand over your heart, and your heart is over here to the left. It used to be in the center, but every time you know, we ask for something, we say, no, 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 later. No, 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 later. Later. And we pushed our heart all the way over here. Any of you had that had an experience? I think that's what happened to the heart. I don't know. But in those 30 minutes at night, everyone, put your hand over your heart, close your eyes, and just start to picture in your mind. So this is the thinking part. This is the visual, the neocortex. Start to picture in your mind um, abundance. Now it can be, I usually picture uh, money call, falling from the sky. And then I feel what it's like if I was actually, as if I was actually having that experience of money falling from the sky and I'm outside and, and, it's, and it's, it's raining dollars. And you just do that for about 30 seconds. You can do it for a minute or two minutes. I usually fall asleep after about a minute or two. And then in the morning, again, when I wake up, I put my hand on my heart. First thing I do in the morning, Gratitude works too. You can do great. Say, I'm grateful for all the money, for all the abundance that's coming to me t today. The 
30 minutes in the morning though are, the, are very, very powerful. So again, you can just take a minute or so before you get out of bed and simply just allow yourself, picture it in your head what you want to picture, the money, however that is. Maybe so, it's because somebody giving you $10 or $20. If you can't, if you don't, if you can't picture, you know, money falling from the sky, maybe you can picture ten dollars, finding ten dollars, or just ten dollars in your hand, and then allowing yourself to feel the gratitude, the appreciation, the joy, the magic in having that ten dollars. Do this in the evening when you're in, in bed going to sleep, and do it in the morning. It's a very, very powerful, powerful process. So, uh, let's recap before we, before we say goodbye today. Pay with cash. Live within your means. Find a way to pay with cash. If you're on credit cards and you are in debt, okay, well, you know, uh, what is it? Um, something to the effect of the average home in America has, has between twenty dollars and $30,000 of debt whether it's credit card or car payments or whatever it might be. So find a way to pay for cash. Start small. The best way in coaching, the best way to create a habit is to start small. So take out $10 out of the bank and just use that $10. It'll go pretty quickly, I will tell you that. <laughs> it might even go in the same day or the same hour. But take out $20 or even $100 if you can afford it and use that and just see where it goes. Five dollars for the coffee, ten dollars for this, whatever it might be. And use that for spending money. And then, if you want to create, if you want to start to create a budget, take out your money, your, your, your food money for the month. Put it in an envelope and use it for the month. Start off with, you may need to, I had to do it a few times to get this right. We weren't sure what we were spending on money. Was somewhere somewhere around, uh, I think about two hundred dollars, two to three hundred dollars a week. So it worked out to be about a thousand dollars a month in food. And uh, we like to eat. I'm Irish. I like to eat. What can I tell you? Um, and once that money is gone from that envelope, then you don't touch any more money until the start of the next month. If you have to eat, sometimes you know, if you have to eat, and I've done it. You know, you have to eat a, a jelly and cheese sandwich or a jelly and peanut butter sandwich. Do it. Instead of taking out that credit card. So that's a really nice way to really start to uh, uh, use cash to, uh, in the world and to start saving instead of using your credit card, your credit card debt. Uh, spiritual practice in the evening, 30 minutes in the morning and in the evening. Uh, the 30 minutes before you go to bed, 30 minutes uh, when you get up in the morning. You know, whether you do a mantra or whether you just think about and feel, that's the key. You've got to put the head and the heart together, link them, and just feel that abundance, feel that gratitude for $10, for $5, whatever it, is, it must be, it will be. Now, and if you're in a place that you, you know, you owe money and you're not feeling grateful, then do your best to... Put ten dollars in your hand and just take a moment to be grateful for that. Hey, I got ten dollars, or hey, I'm not living on the street, and see what happens. Anyway, I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, St. Paddy's Day. I'm the Celtic Coach. Cheers, making life better, keeping life simple. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>